present. Mr. Durst is present. All counsel are present. Mr. Henderson, you may uh, resume playing the recording, beginning with the cross-examination by Mr. DeGarren. Thank you, Your Honor. Resuming exactly where we left off, one hour and four seconds. Seventy-eight, and we moved from in nineteen seventy-nine. 
newspaper reports about Kathy Durst's disappearance? No. When did it happen? The, the it was not a big story in Los Angeles. Were you aware that it was a big story in Manhattan, New York City? When did it happen? Uh, at the very beginning, but I think it petered out by the time I was working in Los Angeles. No. But you, you moved to Los Angeles before 1982. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, I, I'm not sure I understand, so let me ask the question again. Were you aware that okay. it was a... Sorry. Okay, what was my question going to be? That was a big story in New York. That's what my question was. Uh, very perceptive. Um, so, so we get in the record uh, clearly. Were you aware that it was a big story in New York City? No. So the picture is now that uh, you and Susan are working on getting a screenplay for the movie. Based on the book, uh, Easy Street. Correct. How long did those discussions take place? I know, I know what you've told us that you got very psychologically involved with her. How long did those discussions take place? Over four or five years. Okay, and can you tell us when, during that four or five years, she made the statement? Yeah. Did she only make it one time? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, <clears throat> do you recall that it was a recurring statement or only that she made the statement? I don't think it was a constantly recurring statement, but it became part of a theme about the similarities between Bobby and her father and she and Gladys. You had uh, an armchair psychoanalysis of uh, Susan Perman, your own opinion, that uh, <clears throat> she saw in Bob Durst the same thing that she saw in her father. Correct. She shared that. A strong male presence that uh, she looked up to. Correct. He was a bit of a bad boy. Uh, well, she didn't tell you how he was a bit of a bad boy, did you? You know, that's, yeah. that, so sometime during this five-year period of development of the book, when you and Susan were sharing uh, Susan's psychological uh, dependence on her father and then on Bob Durst, sometime in that five-year period is when she made the statement. Yes. Then okay. your <clears throat> relationship with Susan, did it continue? Uh, up until you decided you were going to marry this guy that uh, she knew and disapproved of. Yes. When did that happen? I should have found, um, 1990s? That's 1997, maybe? Your answer has a question mark on the end of it. Because I'm terrible at dates. Uh, we, we, we've heard that. You, at, at one point, uh, created a, a timeline, did you? Uh, I'm going to show, have this marked and show it to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Line. This PPP. I'm afraid so, girl. May I uh, leave this way and uh, give one to the witness so she can have one fun? You made it in a well. I'm passing to her. Is it okay, Judge? You made it in a well. I've heard you recognize uh, those two pages that have been given to you at the title of Susan Berman Timeline. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, this is your own work, correct? Yes. Now, we know that when you were being interviewed by Mr. Jurek, you mentioned that you were working on a timeline, didn't you? 
When I met with Mr. Chiracki? Yes. I don't know. Okay. Have you <clears throat> reviewed either the transcript of or the video of your interview with Mr. Chiracki? No. How did you come to meet Mr. Chiracki, by the way? We just know each other through the business. He saw me out. And uh, how long before uh, the recording of your interview, which took place in 2011, did Mr. Jarecki seek you out? I don't remember. I didn't. I don't believe I did this for Mr. Jarecki. Uh, I don't think. No, I'm not saying that you did. Do you? It took you a while to complete this, didn't it? I don't think so. How long did it take? Probably a day or two. When did you complete it? I think I did it in order to meet with Mr. Dillon. <coughs> okay. So, we know that the first recording meeting took place in 
you and Mr. Jarecki's uh, talk uh, at length about Susan Berman and your discussion with Susan Berman, you just didn't remember. Correct. Mm-hmm. You have to 
Circle Asher engine. Excuse me, yes. And <clears throat> those boxes, the last time you saw them, were where? Well, the last time I looked for storage boxes of projects of mine, they didn't go back that far. And they were in two houses ago, so boxes I have in my house now are from about 10 or 15 years ago. They don't go back that far, so they must have been thrown away. Have you looked for them recently? No, I've looked for other projects that don't go back that far and they don't exist. So you haven't looked for these numbers? Mm -hmm, because projects that are uh, more well, recent... Well, I just asked you what you have. No, I haven't, because I know they're not there. And you know they're not there because... Projects that are more recent are, are not there. I don't mean to argue with you. I'm just trying to get as, as clear an answer as I can as to where... Well, I will explain it to you. Okay, that was really... Let's pause. Breathe. Okay. Or, you know, he's, 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 he hasn't finished his question yet. So that's, that's the, whole, the simple, simple rule here is we're going to just wait till he finishes then breathe, and then answer, and then the next question. <clears throat> okay, let's try the, the notes that you took during the five-year period of your um, conversations with Susan Worth, in which you say that she made the same. Where... First of all, I'm certain I did not write that statement down because I wasn't focusing on it as I testified before. But whatever statements I, whatever notes I have on that project no longer exist. Is that not responsive? Well, you didn't actually finish the question. Did you have any other projects with someone who was murdered? No. So Susan Berman is the only person that you represented uh, who's been murdered. Yes. And when you learned of her murder, you said you immediately had suspicions that Bob Durst was involved. Is that right? Yes. And that was in uh, uh, some years ago when that happened.
but an infantile memory or something that charged her up. It was like sexual pleasure for her. Chicken to cock. I can handle this. I'm a mall. I can do this. I can keep a straight face. I can do this and you will need me forever. This puts me above all the other girls because the sense of entitlement I got from him afterwards, the fact that he called her, made her more important than all of the past. Have I read that correctly? Yes, sir. And those were your words? Yes, sir. Would you agree with me that if you had remembered it, if Susan had said it to you, the statement, that would have been an appropriate time to tell the situation. Uh, do you remember the question, do you? You want to repeat the question? Yes. Oh, yes. That would have been an appropriate time. It would just have been. Has, please don't interrupt me. Um, and I'll try not to interrupt you also. It's very hard on the court reporter. And that's, you don't have to be doing the favor for me. Good, that's good for her. Would you concede? that that would be an appropriate time if Susan had made the statement, and if you had remembered her, to that when Mr. Correct, she told me she called Albert Einstein. It would have been marvelous if I remember that. This would have been a great context had I remember that. But you didn't remember it then? I did not remember that. And even preparing for Mr. Jarecki's uh, interview, I did not prepare for Mr. Jarecki's interview. I did not prepare for Mr. Jarecki's interview. You did it cold. Excuse me? You did it cold. You did the interview cold. I did the interview cold. That was the first time I was thinking about her in a very, very long time. And I was beginning to remember the context of five years of conversations here. And the five years covered two subjects. Why she was the spokesman for Bobby, and how good that made her feel. Am I answering too much? No, I allow you to answer that one. That way, <coughs> then you may finish. Spokesman for Bobby, and? Which was a separate issue than why she made this phone call. Which was a very specific thing she said, maybe just once, uh, which I only remembered after seeing the second jinx. All right. Uh, jinx, Dr. Sorry, did you finish? Did you get that? Our microphone's really taped up here. Yeah, so I have to. All right, uh, I'll, I'll ask you, uh, I've made an exception there about explaining because of the circumstances, but now just listen to the question and only answer the question. You may proceed. Don't you need to lower the microphone? I'll help. Well, it, it, it will until it, we have technical problems. Oh, okay. Right, right. Yeah. It'll help until it doesn't. Right. Okay. Um, well, let me go to another statement, and the reason I'm asking you this is it's going to be pretty much the same. That even with being specific about answering Mr. Jarecki's questions about your conversations with Susan. You didn't remember the statement. Is that right? What's the distinction from the last question? Yes. Um, the deeper we go into the interview with Mr. Jarecki, I, I hope to be able to show that there were a number of times when if Susan had made the statement, you would have repeated. Well, I disagree with you. Later. 
read some of your uh, conversations. That was your work, correct? You're, you're reading the rest of it, and uh, I'm not asking you about that yet, I will. Well, here, here's what you said, I'm trying to remember it very carefully because it was a long time ago, and it's hard for you to distinguish it all from what you learned subsequently. That's, that's a statement that you made, correct? You have to say yes or no. Yes.
this would have been a good time to bring up the, the state if Susan actually made it, and if you had remembered it. Yes. But this didn't remind you that you know, there's something back here in your mind. Nothing. Now, what you did remember uh, at the time of the directing uh, interview was that Susan had acted as Bobby's, I uh, use Bobby because that's the name he used, as Robert Durst's spokesman following Kathy's disappearance. You didn't remember that, did you? It was her life. Yes. Let's look at what you said about that. The morning of the, after the accident, she had to take over and be the spokesman. She was, Bobby was so happy that she was able to do it. And he called her a Bobby. She was great. <coughs> Your understanding and what you're explaining here is that you were aware at the time of the Turecki that the doctors had uh, gotten uh, Susan Berman to act as his spokesperson with the press, right? Yes. And you didn't uh, remember if she did make it the statement. Yes. This would have been a good time to tell Mr. Director if you had remembered it and if she had made it. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's an ordinary term, but it has special meaning in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. What is that mean? 
It means you do a three-act structure beat for beat that gets approved by the studio before you go to, to screenplay. Okay, and of course it would be based on the cheesy street. Based on the book. We may have, because she was a first-time screenwriter. Did uh, anyone in law enforcement ever ask you for that? No. Do you know if you still have it? I'm certain I don't. And you're certain because why? Because I don't have treatments or notes from projects that were 10 years hence. So you don't keep your files? Well, I try to, but once they, before they were um, on files, they just became impossible to store. There's just no much, there's not enough room for them anywhere. Did you? Go to anyone in law enforcement after Susan's death. Yeah. To tell them uh, your yeah. suspicions. Yeah. And the basis for your suspicions. I think everyone had the same suspicions I did, so I didn't see why mine were special. Didn't ask you why else had the same suspicions. I'm sorry. I'm asking you about yours, and you know. No, I didn't. So you did not go to law enforcement, did you? You were. You did consider yourself a good friend of Susan. Well, we hadn't been friends for a few years, but I didn't think I had any significant evidence to share with them. Only when I did, did I consider going to law enforcement. Mr. Henderson. <clears throat> well, the break uh, in that conditional examination uh, coincides with our break today, so we'll pick up tomorrow morning with the balance of the conditional examination of that witness. We'll, I hope, uh, to be able to commence right at 9 o'clock. I'm going to ask you to return tomorrow's a shorter day because uh, we're, well, we've already explained. So t t we're going until 2.30 uh, tomorrow. We're accommodating an uh, appointment for someone. So we will uh, go until 2.30 tomorrow. Anything else? Then, uh, yes, Mr. DeGaran? It's right through lunch? No, I, I think we should take a break. I don't like oh. going through lunch. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah. Tomorrow, it's too hard. A, are we doing a full lunch or just a break? And we're doing our doing our lunch break, and then we're picking up at 1:30. We're going to do another hour, and then we'll be excused for the day. All right. So, <clears throat> do not converse among yourselves or with anyone else on any subject connected with this case. Do not form or express any opinion on the case. Department one is adjourned.